This IQ Air has served our home well for the past four years. Minus the battery. That seems to no longer hold the charge. So let's take a look inside and see what we can find. Begin by removing the four rubber feet on the bottom of the unit. In full disclosure, this isn't my first time taking the machine apart. And following, you'll want to use an average Phillips head screwdriver to dive deep into the screw wells. You'll need a two inch or six centimeter long drive to reach the screw heads. Next, you can separate the upper and lower shell halves. No further clips holding it together. Right away you'll see the bulging lithium ion battery. This first PCB board is friction held to the bottom half of the case. Simply slide it upwards to release it. To release the LCD assembly, slide it downward away from the case. Though it complicates maneuvering around the unit itself, I decided to leave the temperature sensor taped to the upper bezel to make things simpler in the long run. Be sure to collect these two white plastic buttons that fall out, as you will need these during the reassembly. I'll leave a few pictures at the end of the video for a better look at the numbering codes and labels visible at the inside of this unit. Generally, I prefer not to unplug any ribbon cables or connectors that may be hard to reconnect later on. Next, the battery is held in place with a large black square double-sided adhesive. Fortunately, it's not as strong of a hold as an iPhone battery is. Nonetheless, I did remove it for the first time just a few days ago, making it look a lot easier this go around. After removal, I peel back some of the black adhesive to reveal the battery specs. This battery is a 3.7 volt with a 1850 milliamp hour capacity. You should be able to find any cheap generic replacement online. My replacement was a 2000 milliamp hour, so it should also hold for a bit longer of a charge. However, I was not able to find a replacement with similar dimensions. So I hope this thicker one will work once I try to close the shell back together later on. To remove the battery, you can desolder the wires where they connect to the PCB pads, or just cut them like this. My initial plan was to solder the new leads to the old wires to reduce any possibility of damage to the PCB itself by overheating or pumping into the surface surrounding the pads especially true since I don't have my good soldering iron at this time. In the end, I ended up removing the original battery wires from the PCB and adding some solder to connect the new battery leads.
Now a quick double check test to see if everything still powers up and Wow, my first try. 64% battery charge from factory. Now to see if it holds under load. And another success. Here I'm adding some adhesive to hold the battery back into its place. At the time of this filming, I'm unaware of IQ Air offering any official battery replacements. The last step is to put it all back together. The trickiest part is to hold those two buttons in place while trying to slide the LCD assembly back into its place. on the left and right side of the screen. In the end, the thicker battery did prove to be a bit of a tight fit for the shell. After receiving a full charge overnight, I ran a battery test, and under its current settings, I'm happy to say it lasted over three hours. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please consider a like and subscribe to help this starting channel. Thanks for watching, Chris.